You're watching college basketball on ESPN3. It's day two of the Kimi Northern Kentucky Basketball Classic. Later today, it's Northern Kentucky and Manhattan, but up next, it's Coastal Carolina taking on UNC Asheville. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Northern Kentucky University. Alongside Brady Labor, I'm Matt Saxton. Brady, we have two old rivals getting together today looking for win number one on the weekend. Yeah, this is a round-robin tournament. However, this is akin to the loser's bracket if we were bracketing it up and both teams looking to get off the schneid. And, of course, if Coastal Carolina is going to be able to do that, it's going to go through Zach Cuthbertson. It went through him yesterday. It's just he was held to one basket. Uh, he went 10 for 13 on the free throw line, so he figured out a way to get his points. He pulled down nine rebounds, but they are looking for him in order to get off on the offensive end. Carrying the load last night for UNC Asheville was Devon Baker. Boy, Baker, he did give up six turnovers. However, he scored 18 points, six rebounds. He's the guy that's going to have to facilitate the offense and get his at the same time. UNC Asheville and Coastal Carolina looking for their first win of the weekend. What are the keys to today's game? Well, they got to get Cuthbertson off early. They got to get him easy touches and get him some looks down low so he can get some easy buckets and get on the board. For UNC Asheville, they need to get off to a better start than they did yesterday. They didn't get to double digits till past the halfway point of the first half. And as far as both these teams are concerned, you alluded to it, Matt. It's welcoming back an old friend. This is a big South Conference rivalry from years ago, but now the Coastal is in the Sun Belt. It's a little different. They don't meet each other as often as they used to. Of course, two very young teams and two teams that are picked in the bottom half of their conference preseason standings as we take a look at the preseason predictions for each conference. The Sun Belt Conference, Coastal Carolina, finished to pick 10th. They are with 40 points. Georgia State is the preseason favorite in the Sun Belt with 12 first place votes. Taking a look at the Big South, which is where Coastal Carolina used to be. UNC Asheville, very young team, but picked to finish eighth in the Big South poll. Radford is your odds on favorite with 28 first place votes. Ready for action today at Northern Kentucky University. UNC Asheville and Coastal Carolina, the first game of the afternoon. Ready to get this game tipped off. Brady, be interesting to see how these two teams respond to tough losses yesterday. Yeah, quick turnaround, so you got to have a short memory. Yeah, you kind of got to work on things that, you know, you did poorly and accentuate the things you did well, but basically, it's tournament basketball. These kids all went through the AAU circuit. It's time to just forget about it and go on to the next one. No problem for them to play three straight days, and good for the coaches early on to kind of see what their team's made of to be able to play back to back to back. Ready to get started today. Amadou Bamba ready to jump it up against Cody Jude. And Bamba's going to win the opening tip. We are underway from BB&T Arena. Raymond Dibba going to run the point here for Coastal Carolina. There's Dibba in place of Devontae Jones, who was injured in that Camel game. He had surgery earlier in the week, and he did not make the trip here to Highland Heights. Dibba works it to the outside. 13 to shoot. A.J. Sanders getting the start today. Tries to lob it down to Cuthbertson, who puts it up. Can't get it to go. Offensive rebound by Dibba, who backs up. Still can't get it to go. Asheville the rebound. Well, they went down low to Cuthbertson, just like we talked about in the open, Matt, but he just couldn't convert, much like he did yesterday. Really struggled from the floor yesterday. Going to have to do better today. Coastal Carolina going to come out with a victory. Jalen Seegers with the basketball. Works it over to Cody Jude. Seegers works it over for Jones. In the corner, Von Baker tries to force it inside. Out of bounds, it'll be UNC Asheville ball. Yeah, a little discombobulated there. Coastal really getting their hands in the passing lanes there to disrupt the Asheville offense. And now just six on the timer on the inbound. Really loading up the post. Our Coastal Carolina, nothing open underneath. Baker having a hard time finding somebody to get it into, and he doesn't. It's a five-second call. I'll tell you what, you got to have that internal clock in your head. Before you get to four, you got to know whether to burn that timeout. You're only a minute in, so I'm sure that it was better just to take the turnover now. But, wow, Coastal really ramping up the defense on that inbounds play. Not exactly what they want out of their first possession. And full court press extended here for UNC Asheville. Cuthbertson will take the ball. Works it over on the left side for A.J. Sanders. No score so far, a minute in. It's first game of two on this Saturday here at Northern Kentucky University. Sanders with 10 to shoot. 
Works it up top for David Pierce. Cuthbertson nope. lobs it down low. Got Dibba down low with the left hand. He scores. Boy, they're milking that shot clock all the way towards the end. I was about ready to interrupt you and say no sense of urgency until they finally pounded it down low to Sanders. Just in the nick of time, they work it down low, and it's a 2-0 lead. Seegers works it up top all the way to Devon Baker. Baker had a big night tonight, or last night, I should say. Baker will take the shot. He leaves it short, and Cuthbert's in the rebound. And yeah, nice little in-between game. It just doesn't fall for Baker. Dibba laying it off. Down low in the slam by Bamba. The big fella runs the floor, and as long as he keeps his hand up, he'll get rewarded. Great recognition on the break. And the Stufferino at the end. Get a Stufferino in early on you this Never Saturday. know when you get another one, Matt. <laughs> That's right. Bamba makes the best of that. It's a 4-0 lead for Coastal Carolina. Baker comes off the screen. Works it for Tajon Jones. Into the corner, three-pointer on the way. It's good for Cody Jude. Yeah, Jude, another one. He really needs to get off early. See that ball go through the net. That Just something as simple as that builds confidence. Pressure again, and Coastal Carolina able to break that press. Good pace early on. Dibba drives the baseline, works it back for Bamba. Up top for Cuthbertson. Sanders with 10 to shoot. All the way around looking for Pierce. Pierce works it down low. Looking for Bamba with a left-handed hook and he scores. I'll tell you what, the big fellow with the left hand gets it over Peck. Back-to-back -back buckets there for the big guy. I'm gonna do Bamba with all six, in fact, in Coastal Carolina, 6-3 lead over Asheville. Peck comes around the screen. Jude gets it back, driving with the left hand. Seegers hands it off. Devon Baker back to Seegers in the corner, 10 to shoot. Seegers, the three left short. Rebound pulled down by Dibba, and he's going to run. Dibba drives down the lane with a right hand. And oh, 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 oh. what a vicious block, but it's going to be goaltending as the starters for Coastal Carolina. You see Dibba, Pierce, Bamba, Sanders, and Cuthbertson. That was a heck of a block, but unfortunately for him, it was coming down. As Seegers, Baker, Jude, Jones, and Peck, the starters for UNC Asheville. Great athletic play, and it'll make you think twice, even though that is a, a goaltending call. That's a message sender early That's on. That's exactly right. But it's 8-3 Coastal Carolina driving to the baseline as Cress Worthy is into the game, and he steps out of bounds. It'll be Coastal Carolina ball. Yeah, Worthy played well off the pinch last night against Northern Kentucky for the Bulldogs. It's seven points and four assists in that backup point guard role. They're trying to evolve that point guard spot there. I don't think that's, that's obviously not Dibba's natural position, but at least for the, the time being, that's what they're going to ask. And look at this, that 1-3-1 uh, zone that we saw last night against NKU, Asheville breaking it out. Working it down low, Cuthbert's an eight to shoot. Swings it left side for Dibba. Dibba, nice shot, fake, puts up the shot, doesn't get it to go, but he's fouled. And he'll go to the line for two. Yeah, Jones on the close out there. Kind of dove after the shooter. Made the collision there. Take a look at what happened yesterday to Coastal Carolina. They were up by as many as 13 in that second half, but Manhattan comes back to pull out the victory yesterday. Yeah, Manhattan kind of turned that into a rock fight early, and you know Manhattan had a lead through much, throughout much of the first half. Then Coastal came out, looked like they made all the adjustments. They were cruising like a wrong, and then all of a sudden. That basket just shrunk into the size of a thimble, and they couldn't make a shot. And Manhattan just kind of hung around and hung around until Maya Bud Mack comes up with that shot there in the last minute of the game, and Manhattan sneaks out here with a win. And Brady, we talk about it all the time with young teams as Dibba knocks down both free throws. Is how do you close games when you have a lead? Mm -hmm. Especially, obviously, it was a neutral site game, but being away from home, how do you finish games off? Well, Coastal's not that young of a team. I think it was, you know, the absence of their point guard. Until they figure out who's going to replace him, that is going to be the key for this team. Cuthbertson sends it down low, and a foul going to be called against UNC Asheville. Of course, UNC Asheville, they played the host last night, Northern Kentucky, and Northern Kentucky very impressive in the victory over Asheville. Yeah, not a pretty sight for Asheville. They were really outmanned from the word go, but as we said in that broadcast, Asheville only bringing back 5% of their offense from last year, three returning players, and one of them only played one minute of one game. So that doesn't really count. So they're just trying to figure things out, and as long as they're set 
for uh, their conference play, I think they'll be okay. Asheville, one of the youngest teams, one of the youngest staffs, has a nice alley-oop, and Cuthbertson finishes it. Yeah, nice screen there by the free throw line to free Cuthbertson, and then he just goes up and gets it using his athletic ability on the lob pass. It's an 8 nothing run for Coastal Carolina and a 12-3 lead. Devon Baker works it back up top, looking for Luke Lawson. Lawson into the corner. Three-pointer on the way is no good. Offensive rebound pulled down by Cressworthy. Yeah, Lawson didn't come into the game last night until the second half. Knocks down a shot the first time he touches the ball. Now they're trying to generate some offense here in the early going, hoping he can get off. Worthy works it down to Gilmore up top. Devon Baker for three. It's off the back iron, and the rebound pulled down by Dibba. Coastal Carolina will look to push it. Ball goes out of bounds. That will bring us to our first timeout of this afternoon contest. A good start for Coastal Carolina. They lead UNC Asheville by a score of 12 to three. You're watching the Kimi Classic on ESPN3. It's always out there. The horizon. A reminder that our greatest goals are rarely attained. And as soon as you reach one, another emerges. But every day we rise and work harder, dig deeper, ask one more question, take one more shot in relentless pursuit of our horizon. Come support the Norse at Motor City Madness as we defend our title marked second through the sixth at the brand new Little Caesars Arena in Detroit. To reserve your seat, visit the Northern Kentucky box office or visit horizonleague.com. We'll see you in Detroit. I am tough. I am focused. I am excitement. I am integrity. I am driven. I am resilient. I am part of a family. I am a student and an athlete. I'm loyal. I am composed. I am determined. I am competitive. I am a champion. I am a North. Horizon League men's and women's basketball takes over Little Caesars Arena March 11th and 12th in Detroit. Reserve your seat for the semifinal and championship by visiting the NKU box office or horizonleague.com. See you in Detroit. Today's production is crewed entirely by Northern Kentucky University students. They gain valuable hands-on experience that will benefit them as they enter the job market. For more information on the electronic media broadcasting major and the many other degree programs offered by Northern Kentucky University, log on to the website, nku.edu, Northern Kentucky University, success by design. Big thanks to our EMB students who have three very long days of setup and tear down and games. They do a fantastic job, Brady. Absolutely. I came through that program myself, so I know what they're going through, and it's valuable learning opportunities for them to go off into the quote-unquote real world, if you will. Coastal Carolina, five of seven from the floor so far. It's uh, not the start that UNC Asheville was hoping for. Not at all. It was reminiscent of yesterday when they went up against NKU and, uh, you know, uh, one for six from the uh, field. That's something that's got improved. But what Coastal did a really good job is they established post play, but they did it away from Cuthbertson. It was Bamba, the other post player, and that should set things up for Cuthbertson. Cody Jude works it back up top. A little bit of a trap out of Coastal Carolina. Three on the way by Jude is no good. Rebound pulled down by Coastal Carolina. Yeah, they got Gilmore in the game, does Asheville. Hoping to get some more size out there. Three-pointer on the way is good by Tyrell Gums Freighter. Tell you what, he came out there shooting off the bench, did he not? Not wasting any time. Put me in the game. Knock down a three. And the lead is extended to 12. Coastal going with a, they're going with a 1-3-1 one, one type of zone as their own, but they're not flattening it out as much as UNC Asheville did. It's giving UNC Asheville some difficulties as Baker forces the shot up and doesn't get it to go. Another three ball on the way for Gums Freighter. It doesn't go down. Offensive rebound pulled down by Sanders. They hit that first one. Might as well put up another one. That's called a heat check, but why not, right? <laughs> I mean, that one went went down and came back out. So not a bad shot at all. The only way you're going to find out is keep putting it up. That's right. That's what I always try to tell the coach. <laughs> Gums Freighter works it over to Dibba. Ten to shoot. High screen and roll. A.J. Sanders. Dibba has it go through his hands. It's going to go into the backcourt. It'll be a backward violation against Coastal Carolina. Yeah, I think Dibba just took his eyes off the ball momentarily, trying to figure out his move before he had possession of the ball. 
Rookie mistake happens to us all, but it's unacceptable on this level. Quick sub coming in. Isaac Hippolyte going to check in. He did not play very much yesterday. And in a three-day tournament situation where you're playing every day, you've got to go deep into your bench, and you just have no choice but to trust guys because at the end of those three days, it's going to be difficult. You have to use – and I think – NKU did that very well last night, even early on, mm -hmm. using the whole bench. Right, and Asheville did not. Baker played 35 minutes, and he cramped up at the end. And, you know, he does he shows no ill effects right now. But, man, that's your dude, man. That's your bell cow. you got to make sure that he gets some help. No doubt about it. He's got the ball right now. UNC Asheville trailing this one by 12 points early on. Baker, just a lot of dribbling, not a lot of movement. Nine on the shot clock, three from the left side is good by Tajon Jones. Well, what Baker did is what my old coach used to say, he's testing the ball for air, but they figured out by getting somebody open. That's not coach it up, but you like the result. Worked out well for Tajon Jones, and 15-6 Coastal Carolina leading a steal by Tajon Jones. Two on one, Jones with a left-hand scoop shot, no good. Offensive rebound by Devin, uh, Devon Baker, and. He goes up, he's going to be fouled and go to the line for two. Yeah, Dibba did a really good job of closing out defensively to turn that into a two-on-two, -two, and that made Jones think twice about making that pass and really took it up himself here, as you see, and his shot was just as contested as it would have been with Dibba on the trail, though, but luckily for Asheville, Baker's going to go to the line. Von Baker finished up at Spire Academy, but before that, he spent some time in a Dayton, Ohio powerhouse, Dayton Dunbar. Yeah, Dayton Dunbar has had nothing but athletes throughout. It's uh, both football and boys basketball throughout the years, a great program. When I was coming up, a guy by the name of Keith Byers was the best athlete in that school. Yes, and, sir. And he was great at both football and basketball. Went on to play for Ohio State as a tailback, set some Big Ten records back in the day, and then went on to the Philadelphia Eagles. But he's just one example of the great athletes that have rolled through that school. Full court press here for UNC Asheville. Coastal Carolina able to get the ball in bounds. Comes Freighter, works it across. Trevion Brown. This 1 3 1 defense. Kind of a matchup zone, kind of rotating out of it. Comes Freighter, stumbles and travels with the basketball. It certainly did. Reaching in to cause some problems there was worthy. And the Coastal Carolina bench was looking for a foul on Worthy, but instead it's a turnover. Trying to split that double team, and that doesn't always work for you, as we saw there. It's tough to dribble through a double team, and it resulted in a turnover. Three-pointer from the left side for Tajon Jones. Doesn't go. Offensive rebound, Jalen Seegers. Seegers about caught that with his face. He certainly did. That's Worthy to Tajon Jones. Seegers. Works it down low to Gilmore. Donovan Gilmore up top for Jude. 15 to shoot. Tajon Jones, three from the right wing is good. Ooh, ooh, he didn't have much space, but he launched and fired right in the face of Crawl. And I'll tell you what, man, that there was a deadly shot there by Jones. We had a good look at it right in our line of sight, and it looked good from the release. And here's a steal, but a whistle and a foul going to be called first. Mike Morrell not happy with that call, but... So I tell you what, this is something that Asheville is doing here. They're struggling in the half court, so they're generating offense with their defense. And Jones getting on the floor for some 50-50 balls. You saw Gilmore get him up off the ground and be fired up about it. This might be something that could swing the pace. They've cut the lead down to four here. Seems like Coastal hadn't scored in a long time. Cuthbertson and A.J. Sanders check back in for Coastal Carolina, so and certainly. Maybe that was coincidental that Cuthbertson was on the bench during that time. And Devon Baker checks back in for UNC Asheville. Just over 12 minutes left, first half. Coastal Carolina, four-point lead. Comes Freighter. It's that 1-3-1 zone again. Pass is deflected. Able to keep the basketball. Brown. Down low for Cuthbertson. Lays it in, and he's fouled. Dumped down. That's the weakness of the 1-3-1 is the baseline. Once you penetrate that, that defender comes in. Somebody's going to be open. Cuthbertson was there, and he'll go to the line when we come back. Cuthbertson and Coastal Carolina with a 17-11 lead. You're watching the Kimmy Classic on ESPN3.
Back in Northern Kentucky University, the Northern Kentucky Basketball Classic is brought to you by the Kentucky Employers Mutual Insurance. For this weekend's schedule, live stats and video and team information, visit the Kimi Basketball Classic homepage at nkunorse.com slash index. You got to meet Brandon Volker before the game, the chairman of their board. He'll be an interview subject for tomorrow's halftime interview. Of course, that game's going to be on Fox Sports Ohio. A lot of folks around here excited about that. The maiden voyage. Absolutely. It's over there. It's first great. of a five-game package it's for great men's basketball. Great to see Northern Kentucky getting that regional and national exposure on Fox Sports Ohio. And you'll have the call of that one, as well as the second game tonight, which will also be on ESPN3. Yeah, we have the, the coach, Rich Hoyt, which, is, which will be your normal partner on the women's side as we move forward. Good to work with Rich and yourself. Of course, Brad Redford on special assignment this weekend in Mexico. Very special assignment. Yes, it is. Something he was not allowed to turn down. <laughs> UNC Asheville with the basketball. Trailing by seven, eight on the shot clock. Fadeaway jumper on the way by Seegers is no good. And the rebound pulled down by Sanders. Yeah, I tell you, he, you know, he just went up there. That little Akeem shake was kind of what it looked like there, but way too strong there on the one-legged shot. Comes Freighter, passes up a short one, kicks it out wide for the three for Sanders. is no good. Offensive rebound pulled down by Tommy Burton, who scores. Uh, Burton was really good with high energy crashing the boards yesterday off the bench, and he picks up where he leaves off here. The lead, which had dwindled a bit, back up to nine for Coastal Carolina. Dejon Jones gets it to Devon Baker. Baker being hounded by Trevion Brown. Brown tries to poke the ball yep. free. He's going to get called for the foul. Yeah, he put two hands on him. He was lucky he didn't get called the first time when he slapped at it, but he only went in with one hand. That's your benefit of the doubt. But when he comes from behind, he puts two hands on a guy, that's automatic. They're going to call that every time. You know, one of the things the officials have talked about this year is, is freedom of movement. They want mm -hmm. players to be able to move freely, especially with the basketball. And the two hands on, almost always an automatic foul. Yeah, that was from behind, actually, so you really don't see it too much that way. But again, it's an automatic call. Von Baker using the screen. Seegers driving down the lane. Strong move up and under basket in the foul. Great seal there by Jeremy Peck. Basically the akin to a block out as his man was driving towards the hoop. As we'll see it here. Look at 34 and White. He just backs down his man and gets him out of the way. And how about Seegers not only finishing but forcing a foul. He'll go up and try to get the old-fashioned three-point play. Seegers a sophomore from Greensboro, North Carolina. Looking to finish it off, and he does. 20 to 14, Coastal Carolina. Starting to pad that lead a little bit here. They've been cut down by the Bulldogs. Extending the defense again. Coastal Carolina able to break it. Nice spin move down low, and the shot no good from Burton, but he'll go to the line for two. Yeah, Burton probably should have used the glass there. There's a reason why they paint that square up there, and it was at the exact angle where he was, but. He'll still get an opportunity there. Nice spin there, using Peck's body as a guide, and then Peck doesn't have his hands up. So, again, that's something they'll call just about every time. Tommy Burton, junior from Montgomery, Alabama. First one is good. Spent some time at the College of Southern Idaho before making his way to Coastal Carolina. It's an outstanding junior college program out there. A lot of big time players have rolled through there. Burton hoping to be the next one. Second one, no good, Ooh. but offensive rebound. Cuthbertson lays it off down low oh. and a block from behind. He was hammered. I cannot believe they didn't call the foul there. But at least Coastal will have the ball back. Yeah, it sure looked like a Watch lot of arm. We get that. We'll see. We'll take a look. Mm, well, I tell you what, the angle we had, it looked a lot worse than that one there. So I'll, I'll take back my uh, Mr. Seegers there. <laughs> Going to get a block instead of a foul. Hey, that. That's good for him. Nice handoff to Cuthbertson, puts it up, basket in the foul. Yeah, another and one opportunity there. They just rolled him off a screen up towards the free throw line. He gets himself free. Watch him get it there. Right over two guys, not just one. And that was the second time in a row that Cuthbertson found himself with additional defenders. Previous time he had three guys on him and he dumped it off. That time he shoots with just two of them on him. Another missed free throw. Loose ball foul going to be called. I think Asheville going to pick the, pick up the foul. Yeah, Peck is the guilty party. And he's saying that he was grabbed on to. And that's two quick ones on him. So actually, so now he has three fouls. They couldn't get him out of the game in time to prevent him from committing that third foul. So 
I would say he's probably done for the rest of the half, and he's one of the few big guys they have. And we're not even at the halfway point yet, Matt. I think that's where that missed free throw actually hurt UNC Asheville because if he'd have made the free throw, they would have been able to get the sub in. Yep. The missed free throw, unable to do so. And because of that, packed to the bench and to the free throw line for one in the bonus is Tommy Burton. First one good. Yeah, Burton, five points, five rebounds yesterday off the bench. He was just a bundle of energy. And, again, it's one of them deals, and we'll see that when Manhattan plays here in the second game where guys are just told, you give out your maximum effort, and we'll take you out when you're tired. And just, just that's what we need out of you. That's your job, maximum effort. Just go in there like a man with his hair on fire, and we'll figure out when to take you out and give you another run at it a few minutes later. Lead for Coastal Carolina, back up the double digits. It's up to 11. Tay John Jones. Works at left side, looking for Seegers. They are really making it difficult to get it to Baker. Jones gets the handoff, drives down the lane. Scoop shot is up and good. Nice move. Is that the Iceman out there? A little <laughs> finger roll for Jones on the penetration. Freshman from Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Pulls in UNC Asheville back within nine. They wanted to travel on the UNC Asheville bench. Didn't get that call. Fall into that zone there. Comes Freighter, right side for three. It's off the mark. Rebound pulled down. He was close to the logo. I think him making that first shot might have been the worst thing to happen to him is now he's going to start to fall in love with it as it doesn't fall. Stephen Adoka into the game. He picks up the rebound there for UNC Asheville. Goes to Seegers. Coming off the screen is Lawson. Ten to shoot. Tay John Jones will take the three left side. It leaves it short. Rebound pulled down by Cuthbertson. Cuthbertson gets it tangled up as it gets knocked out from behind, but Deba able to get the basketball. Yeah, Lawson does a really good job of wreaking havoc out there. As we said earlier, didn't play much yesterday, and he's getting some early run here in the first half. Comes Freighter with a nice crossover. Sanders gets it, tries to go down the lane, is tripped up. And he'll go back to the free throw line. Tajon Jones, kind of a victim of circumstance there. And it's going to be the team's eighth, so he'll be shooting free throws here. Checking back in for UNC Asheville. David Pierce back in for Coastal Carolina. Cress Worthy coming back in as teams get some subs in here. And that's three fouls that the board is right on Jones. So you got Jones and Peck each with three fouls. That really hurts. Certainly does. I mean, you definitely want to give maximum effort, but you know, you got eight fouls and six of them are split between two guys. One and one here, and a foul going to be on the rebound, going to go against Coastal Carolina. Well, the one thing about UNC Asheville is they've got 15 players on their roster, but two of them are sitting out on a red shirt, one other one, I believe, sitting out due to injury. So they're only coming in with 12 and, and already two of their key players on the bench with three fouls. Yeah, they just got to get through this right now and get to the second half. But still, it's not ideal to start the second half with three fouls. You can quick up a, you know, pick up a quick one, and you already got four. And, you know, it really limits what you can do as far as your rotation. Devon Baker trying to get something going here. He can't do it. It's knocked out of bounds. It'll stay with UNC Asheville. Yeah, Baker kind of short on that one. He's just being harassed. I mean, he's cl it's clear that he is the central focus of the of the defensive game plan to try to stop him. Kind of the cut the head off of the snake kind of theory. Brima Deba is following him around, really making life difficult for him. Cress Worthy using a screen up top. Back to Worthy. A tan dribble and a foul going to be called. I believe David Pierce is going to pick up the personal. Nope, they called it on A.J. Sanders, Sanders instead. Still, that's a cheap one there. You just kind of reach in on a guy that's already blowing by you as a help defender. Really not even moving toward the basket. He was headed to the baseline. Yeah. yeah that... Nearly another five-second call. Adoka gets it down low, and he travels with the ball. Yeah, he was going to get three seconds of the travel instead. He kind of moved that pivot foot, trying to establish himself there. Well, he had Tommy Burton standing behind him, waiting for him to go up. So that's... Not a good choice either way. Uh, he knew it too, and that's why he was starting to establish to get out of his way, try to create some space by backing into him. Coastal Carolina with a nine-point lead. Quickly down the floor, a shot put up by Burton is no good. Rebound pulled down by Steven Adoka. Well, Burton's a little bit of a pull in the China shop sometimes when he penetrates like that, but I tell you what, I still like his energy. Three-pointer from the left oh. side is good, Devon Baker. Yeah, that'll get Baker rolling. I'd say he's not going to have much open space, so if he's going to shoot, he has to do it immediately. Devon Baker pulls UNC Asheville back within six. That defense there. 
Really making life difficult. Trying to get in the passing lanes here. Three-pointer from the right side for Pierce is left short. Eye up for the rebound and now loose on the floor. And it falls in the <laughs> arms of Burton who can't get it to go. Rebound put back up. Basket and a foul. If you fail once, try, try again. That's what Burton did right there. You know, Burton did the thing that coaches don't like. He did not get on the floor to go after that loose ball and it ended up benefiting him. Coastal Carolina will shoot free throws when we come back. 7.32 to go, an eight-point lead. The Kimi Classic on ESPN3. Patriotism. It inspires passionate debate. It's worn like a badge of honor with good reason. Because it means love and devotion for one's country. But what really makes up this country of ours? It's the people. To love America is to love all Americans. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love, love beyond age, sexuality, disability, race, religion, and other labels. Because love has no labels. It's always out there. The horizon. A reminder that our greatest goals are rarely attained. And as soon as you reach one, another emerges. But every day we rise and work harder, dig deeper, ask one more question, take one more shot in relentless pursuit of our horizon. We are NKU and we are unstoppable. For 50 years we've broken barriers, transformed lives, tackled the toughest challenges facing our region and the globe. We boldly inspire generations of students to shine their lights and change the world. And this is just the beginning. See what the future holds at nku.edu slash 50. Join the uprising and order your 2018-2019 men's, men's and women's basketball tickets. Season tickets, many plans, and individual game tickets are available. For more information, log on to norsetickets.com or call 859-572-7848. Norse up. Drew McDonald there catching some action. You know, this is a great event for a basketball junkie. I know for a fact Drew McDonald's a basketball junkie. His mom, Christy Freppin McDonald, was a great coach at Newport Central Catholic. Drew was telling me stories about remembering me announcing when he was the ball boy on the end of her bench, and Jamie Thiem and Nicole Coyote were lighting things up for the thoroughbreds. Wow, that was uh, a couple years ago. Uh, that was more than I'm willing to admit. <laughs> Three-point play is good. And Coastal Carolina's lead back up to nine with 7.30 to go. Points in the paint, really the story so far. You look at the stats, 16 to four in favor of Coastal Carolina. Right side for Seegers. Jalen Seegers, Devon Baker. Baker using the screen. Triple teamed in the corner, Seegers. Jude all the way into the corner. Lawson, the jumper is no good. Rebound pulled down by Diva. Coastal Carolina is really whipping Asheville on the boards right now. That's 17 to just seven for the Bulldogs. Diva drives inside, kicks it out wide. Looking for Pierce. Up top for Cuthbertson. Lays it off down low for Burton, who lays it up oh, and in. He went up there with bad intentions, but again, when you got that 1-3-1, one, one, the baseline is vulnerable, and Burton took advantage of it. Picking it apart right now. Double-digit lead once again for Coastal Carolina. As far as the rebounding advantage, too, when you play zone, it's very difficult to rebound because you don't have a man to block out. You just have an area. Swung over for Jude for three. It's no good. And a whistle and a foul. Going to go the other way in free throws. Yesterday, I did not make that play, Matt, and I redeemed myself there. I Fair. just wish the coach, Rich Hoyt, was here to see me. Yeah, and I, I guess for the second time, I went with it one hand. That's that impressive. That time it worked. They say that's not fundamental, but. It's not, man, but sometimes players make plays. <laughs> that's right. And we'll then let... sometimes I do also. <laughs> we'll let the coach know when he rolls in <laughs> for game number two. <laughs> David Pierce going to go to the line. It's double bonus time for Coastal Carolina with 628 left in this first half. First free throw is good. Get Bamba back in there. Bamba went off to a great start there, and he's been on the bench here recently. But he had six quick points, and now he's back in after a rest. But Burton really gave him a lot of energy while Bamba was on the bench. Second free throw is good for Pierce. Freshman from St. Petersburg, Florida, has pushed the Coastal Carolina lead to 13. 
UNC Asheville needs to try to find a run, try to find some openings here for Devon Baker. There haven't been many. He's had to try to create them himself. Three-pointer from the left side on the way is no good. That's Jalen Seegers with a shot. Rebound pulled down by Dibba again. Dibba will push. Brings it left side, Cuthbertson. Up top for Kralge. David Kralge, another one of the talented freshmen on this Coastal Carolina squad. Cuthbertson down low. Bamba blocked, but a foul going to be called on Donovan Gilmore. Yeah, Gilmore came in as a help defender there and got a piece of the arm. Actually, they're going to call it on Lawson instead. So they're saying Gilmore was clean up top, and he was based on the re on the replay there, but it was Lawson got him with the body. Yeah, Gilmore just kind of got in there and essentially made that block after the foul was determined, even though the whistle wasn't blown. And I'm not sure if there's something wrong with Lawson. Maybe there's blood there on his knee. I think so. They're going to make him or clean that up, or I didn't know if you didn't know it was an issue when those uh, leggings were down too far. They made him roll that back up for some reason. Everybody satisfied with the wardrobe issue, and I call them leggings. They're a compression type of a compression sleeve, is what it is. But of course, I guess if you got it all the way down to the ankle, it's more of a legging, right? <laughs> I think it is. Amadou Bamba knocks them both down. The junior from Toronto, Ontario, 34-19, Coastal Carolina. And now they're extending that defense once again, and. Devon Baker can't find anybody to pass it to and throws it away. And Coastal throws a press on him just like that, and Asheville didn't really see that coming, and Baker was forced with the turnover there. But Baker's really working hard for everything he's got, and then when he comes up there and he gets jumped like that, it's really difficult. He's going to need some help if UNC Asheville is going to get back into this contest because they, Coastal Carolina is determined to not let him win this game today. Part of the improvement, though, Asheville only scored 19 points for the entire first half yesterday against Northern Kentucky. They're sitting at 19 now with 538 left to go. I know it's, you know, moral victory and nobody wants them. That's kind of where Coach Mike Morell is right now with an entirely new roster. As Dib almost fell into the backcourt there. Dib able to keep his balance just enough to keep possession. David Pierce, 12 to shoot. Nice pass down low looking for Bamba, and his mm. shot is rejected. And Gilmore swatting it away. I mean, that's the spark that UNC Asheville needs. They don't pick up Baker. He takes the three. It's in and out, and Cuthbert's in the rebound. Yeah, somebody needs to find him at all times on the offensive end. Crawls will take a three at the other end. He leaves it short. Cuthbertson goes up for the rebound, and he is fouled. Collision made there. Two UNC rebounders there going after the ball, along with Cuthbertson for Coastal Carolina. And another bad break there for Asheville as Seegers. It's called for the foul here. Yeah, Mike Morrell. Not real happy, he thought maybe. Well, if anybody, Seegers fouled Baker, his own teammate, <laughs> from that angle. So a tough break there for the Bulldogs. First free throw's no good. Dave Lappin would call that friendly fire. <laughs> been quite a bit of that for the Bengals this year. Yeah, I don't know how friendly it's been, but yeah, it's um, it's been a challenge. Second free throw, no good as well, and Donovan Gilmore pulls down the rebound. Approaching five minutes remaining in this first half. Coastal Carolina leading this one 34-19. Seegers puts it to Jude. Hand off to Seegers, back to Baker. There's Dibba on him. That's a tough matchup for Baker to have the much taller Dibba on him to start with. Jude has it poke free, somehow gets it back. It bounces back to him. He turns around and scores. And just right place, right time. Good job there by Jude to finish it. Little pinball wizard there. Jude able to get the finish. Pulling UNC Asheville within 13. And again, that 1-3-1 defense. Cuthbertson takes the jumper from the baseline. It's no good. Whistle and a foul on the floor. And I think UNC Asheville going to be called for another foul. I think we may be going to the monitor on this one. I think I know what this means. Could this be, might be the dreaded hook and hold. Could be the hook and hold. Hopefully our friend Kayla's ready to go there on the trigger as they make their way over to us. And it's not to look at Kayla's smiling face either. And we'll get some confirmation here while they're looking at the monitor. Of course, if you haven't watched a lot of college basketball games this year, this is one of the plays that they are trying to legislate out of the game. And is the mm -hmm. hook and hold where 
basically you take your arm and put it underneath the arm of the person you're trying to block out and it almost looks like the other person is pulling mm -hmm. but that's the intent it's the deception part of it they're trying to take well, away I mean, that's how you were taught to get rebounds and block guys out for you know hundreds of years of basketball and now because of this whole freedom of movement legislation they're trying to eliminate it here and this is basically an and I there mean, it that, is. It, I mean, it, that yeah, looks, it, it's, that's what it is. And sometimes it's not even intentional. Sometimes when you have long arms going up for a rebound there. Now, the more that you follow through, the more it does look intentional there. Right there. You're when pulling you, a guy's arm down. And that one there looks like it's going to be an easy one to call. And Cody Jude looks like he's going to be the one. And it will be a flagrant one if that is indeed the determination. The officials will discuss it after they view the play. And obviously because of the consequences of this foul, they, they do discuss these after they look at the replay and make sure that everybody's seeing it the same way. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So now they're gonna wanna see it again. I think they just wanna make sure our people in the truck are-, are Well, they're getting oh, practice reps. They're getting their practice reps. I'll tell you, we have the best crew in the truck. They do an outstanding job of these replays. Maybe it's a practice rep for the official. It could be. So they bring in the second guy, because if you notice two guys come to the to the monitor at once while third guy holds the ball, and then they rotate when they feel like they need to have an extra set of eyes. And indeed, they have called a flagrant one against Cody Jude. So Jude, and that'll be his first personal foul. It'll be two shots in the ball, and that's, I know, and, and it's always tough because you know the officials not that they feel bad, but they tell these coaches, you know, this is what we're going to call. We have to call this. This is what they want us to do. And mm -hmm. and you hope that as the season goes on, as the seasons go on, that the players will make that adjustment in the way they're taught to rebound, and you'll see it kind of disappear from the game. Or it will just go away in January when conference season starts, which most times happens with these points of emphasis in November. I'm going to do Bama going to the line. He misses the first. But you got the supervisor officials in the crowd, so you know they're going to err. And, and, and Mike now, Morrell just got teed up. He sure did. And he I don't sure know, did. You know, I mean, I think this could be a culmination of things. I don't think this was about this one specific call. Uh, he's been frustrated kind of for a game and a half. He was pretty frustrated last night, too. And yeah. I think this was a culmination of all of that. And again, with the supervisor officials here grading these guys out here in the early going. I mean, they, they, they are going to err on the side of caution, so to speak. Zach Cuthbertson. So he and all the rest of the coaches are put on notice officially. And Cuthbertson struggling from the line, unlike him. He's almost a 70% shooter on the year from the free throw line. He made his first, like, eight or nine last night before he missed one. He ended up being 10 for 13. Well, he had a big miss late in that game. <laughs> he sure did. That was the last one that he missed. But, yeah, it ended up being what turned the game around. So one more coming for Amadou Bamba. Bamba won a gold medal as a member of the 2017 Canadian Under-19 oh, national my. team. Somebody opened the door. We were just talking. I think just mentioning that free throw from last night may have he brought shot that. That's a. It's 15 feet from the rim to the free throw line, and Bamba shot at 14. But Coastal Carolina gets the ball back after the flagrant one and the technical foul. Bamba looking to redeem himself down low, and the hook shot is good. Bamba, that's called being a defensive back on an island. Forget about that missed free throw, the air ball. Just post you up and make you feel a little better when you get it down low. 16-point lead for Coastal Carolina. Left side, Seegers. Up top for Gilmore. Gilmore will take the 17-footer and leaves it short. Rebound pulled down by Bamba. Yeah, it's Bamba crashing the boards there between Bamba, Burton, and Cuffertson in all the rebounds. A.J. Sanders knocks down the three in a timeout. Going to be called by UNC Asheville. Oh, Mike Burrell really frustrated. And they're going to turn this one into the media here as we're under four. 3.46 to go. First half, Coastal Carolina cruising on ESPN3. The Little Caesars Horizon League Men's and Women's Basketball Championship is coming to a campus near you. Quarterfinal games take place March 5th and 6th at the highest seeds in the semifinals and championship take place March 11th and 12th at the Little Caesars Arena in Detroit. To learn more, visit horizonleague.com. Great new wrinkle to the conference tournament format. Eight of the 10 teams will qualify for the 
conference tournament, so that's something to play for there initially. And your top four seeds will all have a home game as part of the quarterfinals of the conference tournament. It's always something to play for. You know, I think it's all these conferences really trying to find a way to make sure the top teams have some sort of advantage in these conference tournaments because so often you see teams win these type of conferences as Jude takes the three and doesn't get it to go, but then they lose in the opening round of the tournament and they end up in the NIT. When you are a one-bid league, you have to make sure your best team is represented in the NCAA tournament, and a lot of times that does not happen because of that very point. Gums Freighter knocks down the three. It is an 18-2 run for Coastal Carolina, and they lead 43-21. Asheville, it's just getting worse for them on the defensive end. And it's really, you got to tip your hat mostly to Coastal Carolina. They're the ones knocking down the shots, shooting 54%. But you know, this zone has not really worked for Asheville. I'm surprised they're sticking with it. Looks like they've modified it to a bit of a 2 3 now. Well, I think it's still the same principle 1 3 1, but they flatten the top of it down so that the baseline is not as vulnerable. But when you shoot over top of it, you know, that's time when you got to go man to man. Jude will take the three from the right side. And still cold from the floor is UNC Asheville. Here comes Coastal Carolina. There's a three from the left side for A.J. Sanders. It's no good. Ball will go out of bounds. And it will be UNC Asheville ball. Again, and plus, Coastal's much bigger and much stronger, a lot more size. So they crash the boards on all the missed shots as well. And again, when you're playing zone, it's so much more difficult to rebound because you don't have a man to, to grab onto theoretically and block out. You have an area. And you're spending your time trying to find somebody in that area to block out. And by that time, somebody snuck past you and they've crashed the boards, no matter what your effort is. Devon Baker really having a hard time, along with this UNC Asheville offense, getting anything going in this first half. Baker gets it back. Found it again by Dibba. He gets around Dibba this time, kicks it in the corner for Adoka for a three. It's no good as well. Offensive rebound pulled down by Jude. A fresh 30-second shot clock. There you see uh, rebounding out of his area was Jude, and now you set up your offense here. And again, Asheville right now, because they're struggling on the offensive end, they're waiting to the end of the clock to try to generate something. Baker, Baker trying to do it himself. Turn around, jumper is good. Yeah, sometimes you just got to call your own number, and that's what Baker did there. Make a play. Try to make sure that that will rub off on the rest of your teammates. On Baker at 18 a night ago, he's going to need another night like that tonight. Lob down to Cuthbertson. Loses control of the ball, but it's out of bounds just before Baker could grab it. It will remain with Coastal Carolina. Baker might have been standing on the end line when that happened. Either way. That's a tough break for the Bulldogs. It's really nothing has gone right for them in either one of these two games so far. 16 on the timer. 127 left in the first half. Divot inbound. Tried to hand it off to Crawls, but it goes off of a UNC Asheville player, at least according to the official on the baseline, it will remain with Coastal Carolina. Another tough break, but 15 seconds on the shot clock for Coastal Carolina. And Mike Morrell really demoralized right now. I mean, he's given everything he can. I mean, he's more or less the sixth defender over there on that bench <laughs> right now, and they just can't get any stops. Cuthbertson, 10 to shoot. Cuthbertson step back, high arcing jumper is short, loss in the rebound. Yeah, I'm not sure that's the greatest shot that Cuthbertson can take there. That's when you're playing and everything is going your way. You just think that <laughs> ball's going in. Yeah, maybe not everything individually, but definitely as their team right now. But you can't have too many of those possessions in a row because that's how you let a team get off the hook. And we kind of saw that last night where Coastal let Manhattan get back in that game and they let one slip away as a result. UNC Asheville shooting four of 19 from three-point range as Baker inside scores again. How about Baker stopping at the Horizon League logo. What a great, great in-between game Baker has showed in those last couple possessions. Just want to put a couple of good possessions here together for UNC Asheville, get some positive thoughts going into the locker room. Drive inside, kicked up to Cuthbertson. Dibba will take the three from the left side. It's too strong, and Cuthbertson going to track it down. Again, that's that zone rebounding out of it. And how about that, an and one opportunity. Zach Cuthbertson just too strong, taking it to the hole, and he'll go to the line to try to finish the three-point play. Yeah, I've never been a coach and never tried to be one because that's a lonely job. But, man, I think at some point, Asheville's got to get out of this zone and go man-to-man. -man. 16 points and seven rebounds in the first half for Zach Cuthbertson. Yeah. And it's good. Three-point play. 
46-25. And that's a tough situation too, Brady. You mentioned coming out of the zone because a lot of times teams will play a zone because they can't afford to get guys in foul trouble. This is already a team that doesn't have a lot of depth. And then if they go to man. They already got two guys in foul trouble sitting on the bench next to Coach Morrell. But, I mean, at some point you're going to dig such a deep hole before you even get to the point to get those guys back in. So, yeah, it, you know, it's a chicken or the egg. There's a shot blocked. Saving inbounds. The shot clock goes off. Yeah. It'll be a shot clock violation. Burton did a great job of closing out there, blocking that shot in the corner. You don't see that very often. But, again, we show it Burton's energy. And now Coach Ellis is going to head and use his timeout that he cannot carry over to the second half. 4.1 seconds here. And I tell you what. Cliff Ellis has been around longer than I've been alive as far as on those coaching staffs. And I say that with the most respect ever. 72 years old, a lifer in this business. He's taken four teams to the NCAA tournament on the NAI level. He's won a championship with Cumberland University. He's done it all. And he's the only Division I coach to have four teams with 150-plus wins. Outstanding coach he is, and he's going to draw one up here. Most times it's going to be successful. And if it's not, it probably won't be because of what he drew up. <laughs> 45th season overall, 825 wins, 747 of those coming at the Division I level. There's an Auburn, Clemson, South Alabama, among the other stops that you mentioned. And he wins everywhere he goes. That's the amazing thing. Yeah. A lot of times you see coaches go to different places, and maybe they haven't had success at one place or another, but Cliff Ellis has won every place he's been. and has done a fantastic job in his 12th year now with Coastal Carolina. And he went to South Alabama. They were rated to downgrade to Division II. That's where they were athletically. And within four years, he had them in back-to-back -back NCAA tournaments, 1979 and 1980. And a foul going to be called. Without any time coming off the clock either. Boy, that's the kind of foul you don't want to be whistled for. Steven Adoka. the signal for what did I do and didn't even have the clock you know start because nobody had touched the ball in play before that foul was called so yeah it didn't matter what play <laughs> you draw up there you know 94 feet away from the basket a foul's called and Burton of course does not make the first free throw but still man if I'm if I'm Cliff Ellis in the Coastal Carolina Chanteliers, I'm really counting my blessings. I'm feeling like I'm living right at this point. Burton makes the second, 47-25 chance here for UNC Asheville. Devon Baker, Devon Baker takes the shot from long range and it hits the backboard. And we have reached halftime at BB&T Arena, the first game of the day in the Kimi Classic. And Coastal Carolina leads UNC Asheville at the half by a score of 47-25. Halftime festivities next. You're watching the Kimi Classic on ESPN3. <laughs> Halftime at Northern Kentucky University. Coastal Carolina shooting 51% in the first half. They lead this one at the half over UNC Asheville. I score 47 to 25. More halftime festivities next. You're watching the Kimi Classic on ESPN3. Back at Northern Kentucky University, Coastal Carolina leading 47-25 at the half. Looking at the tournament schedule, Manhattan and Coastal Carolina started this thing off yesterday. Manhattan squeaked out a two-point win. Northern Kentucky very impressive in their opener last night, winning 77-50 over UNC Asheville. Of course, we have the halftime score here. Coming up next, Northern Kentucky will take the floor once again against the Manhattan Jaspers. Of course, you can catch that game. Brady Labor will be on the call for that one. A 7 o'clock tip-off coming up later on tonight. Coastal Carolina leading 47-25 over UNC Asheville at the half. More halftime festivities coming up next. You're watching the Kimi Northern Kentucky Basketball Classic on ESPN3. Join Tori Watkins every Monday for the Norse Sports Break. Tori recaps the weekend's activities and keeps you up to date on upcoming Norse events. You can catch new episodes of the Norse Sports Break every Monday on the NKU Norse YouTube channel and on NKUNorse.com. 
Halftime in Northern Kentucky University, Coastal Carolina with a big halftime lead over UNT Asheville. We'll take a look at what's coming up next for both of these squads. Obviously, they have one more game left in the Kimi Classic. That'll be coming up tomorrow for Coastal Carolina. That game will be against the host, Northern Kentucky. A tip-off at 6.30 tomorrow night, Eastern Time. That'll be on Fox Sports Ohio. Then a game against Methodist on Tuesday. They'll head to South Carolina. That'll be on the SEC Network on November the 30th versus Hampton on December the 5th. Then an ESPN Plus matchup with Wofford on December the 9th. Been a tough run here for UNC Asheville. They'll look to snap that tomorrow when they take on Manhattan. We'll have that game for you tomorrow at 3.30 on ESPN3. Furman will be coming up next on November the 25th, and they'll head to UT Martin on December the 1st. Uh, the showdown at Auburn on December the 4th. That'll be on the SEC Network. And then they will take on Western Carolina on December the 8th. Take a look at some of the action, Brady, and a very impressive first half from Coastal Carolina. Yeah, it's been all Chanticleers down low. That's Burton. And then they go in the outside, knocking them down. The Baker trying to get his there. That there was from the outside. He had a rally, a couple of baskets down low in the in-between game. Here's one of them right here, but it's been all Chanticleers here in the first half. Coastal Carolina, 47-25 lead. More halftime next on ESPN3. Back in Northern Kentucky University. Coastal Carolina with a big lead at halftime. Brady, let's take a look at the first half stats. Well, I tell you what, it's been all Coastal Carolina shooting 51.7% from the field. Points in the paint, 22 to eight in favor of the Chanticleers and the rebounding advantage. Also a microcosm of that. 26 for Coastal Carolina, just 13 for Asheville. As Asheville stayed in that zone to try to stay out of foul trouble, and it really hasn't worked. Something's got to give for uh, Asheville here if they want to get back into this one. Of course, leading the way for Coastal Carolina at halftime is Zach Cuthbertson with 17 points and seven rebounds. And while we're mentioning Zach, I just want to give a shout out to his mom, Wanda. Yes, indeed. Zach came up to us and asked if we would say hello to his mama. He says he loves you, Wanda, and we will do that. So Zach Cuthbertson being a great son here and a great ball player for Cliff Ellis and his crew. The man does it all. That's right. He's taking care of business on the court. And taking care of business back at home as well. Hey, you know a lot about a man and how he feels about his mama. Well, and obviously he wanted to give Wanda a shout out. Ain't that the truth. Coastal Carolina with a big lead as we get ready to start second half action. In this first game of two today, the Kimi Classic, Northern Kentucky and Manhattan getting warmed up backstage. They'll take the main floor coming up at about seven o'clock tonight. I have that game for you as well. That's going to be interesting contrast because both teams like to press and play full court. However, Northern Kentucky likes to speed it up in the half court sets where Manhattan likes to slow things down, keep the game into the 50s. So it's really going to be the best team's offense to overcome the other team's stifling full court defense. Baker going to try to start this off well for UNC Asheville, and he can't get the three to drop, and Cuthbert's in another rebound. Boy, Baker did everything he tried to do in that first half to carry his team, and really, at this point, he's been by himself offensively, and they're going to that man-to-man -man here as we start the second half. And they've got all their players back on the floor, too, the starting five back out there. Cuthbert's in the turnaround jumper, no good, and Baker tries to get the rebound. It's loose on the floor. Peck hits the floor for it. Still loose. No control. Finally, Baker rips it away. Keep in mind, Peck has three fouls, and Jones, who has the ball now, also with three fouls. So they sat on the bench for a long time in that first half, and maybe that's what the doctor ordered. Peck down the lane, puts it up. It's too strong. Gets his own rebounds. It falls into his hand. He's stripped away from behind by Bamba. Just waves of players for Coastal Carolina going after Peck there. Sanders goes up. Whistle. He called it blocking foul there. I think they said he was inside the restricted area. Well, that's probably the only reason that was a block because he had position there. Jalen is going to get called here. Actually, he's outside the restricted circle and it looked like he was set up and maybe just for an eyelash too late. So A.J. Sanders will go to the free throw line. Sanders misses the first. And one more coming. Still looking for the first points of the second half. Sanders, the senior from Greenville, North Carolina, can't convert. Rebound pulled down by Cody Jude. 
Coastal Carolina on a five-game road swing thanks to the fact that their arena is hosting the Myrtle Beach Invitational. Of course, Coastal can only play in it every so, every so many years. This is one of the off years, so they had to get out of town, and they're trying to come away with a few wins here. Dejon Jones is rejected by Bamba again. And Coastal Carolina comes out. Pierce with a spin move. Prima Dibba. Back for Pierce, looking for Cuthbertson, posting up down low. Whistle and a foul going to be called. Let's see if it's the Baker. The party is, and it is Baker on a reach in. So glad you joined us this afternoon on ESPN3, along with our electronic media and broadcast crew, along with Brady Labor, Matt Sexton with you. Coastal Carolina in control of this one. Three-pointer from the right side is good by Abrema Diva. Boy, it was a nice feed there by Cuthbertson, and then he seals off the defender, leaving him wide open in the shooter, knocking it down. Coastal Carolina has doubled up on UNC Asheville here early in the second half. Devon Baker, nice move. Good ball movement here. Jude will take the three, and he leaves it short. Offensive rebound. Pulled down by Seegers. Yeah, Seeger doing a good job of rebounding out of his area there. Definitely see better flow from UNC Asheville with this five on the floor. Not a lot of depth early on. Peck swings it all the way over to Jude. Jude with the body contact. He's unable to finish through the contact. Rebound pulled down by Sanders. Yeah, nice job defensively by Bamba, who runs the floor, but it's Cuthbertson with a slam dunk. Not a stuff for Reno. Now just we had one of them. We might get back to one. He did ask for his mama to say hi, so we'll get him next time. Cuthbertson again just having a monster game, and Coastal Carolina's lead continues to increase. Hey, John Jones works it over for Jude. Jones comes off the screen, 10 to shoot. Baker going to have to make something happen. Devon Baker, contact going to be on the floor before the shot. Asheville will keep possession. Yeah, Baker's just trying to create any offense he can there, even if he has to go to the free throw line, but it's called out on the floor. Let's see, he was not in the act of shooting there. Cress Worthy going to check back in. Worthy gave him some good run there in the first half while Jones was in foul trouble, and he's going to go out there again. Played very well last night in the loss to Northern Kentucky. Worthy will run the point here for UNC Asheville. Yeah, this gives Baker an opportunity to work off the ball, not expend as much energy. Baker uses Peck screen, will take the jumper top of the key, can't get it to go. A Little bit of confusion there, Cuthbertson able to pull down the rebound. Yeah, two guys for Coastal Carolina crashing the boards, no one for Asheville. Dibble with the basketball. Plays it left side, Cuthbertson works it down low. Nice pass in the middle for Sanders, Sanders able to Handle that tough pass. Dibba drives down the lane. Cuthbertson will take the three from the left side. It's no good. Rebound pulled down by Cress Worthy. He'll bring it into the front court. Of course, this is a long time rivalry back to the Big South days where Coastal Carolina leads the series 38 to 34. Like Jude may have taken an extra step there, but instead he's going to draw the foul, and that'll take us to our first time out of this second half. 15-57 left in the second half. Coastal Carolina 52, UNC Asheville 25 on ESPN3. Uprising and support NKU student athletes by becoming a part of the Go Norse Fund. Any level of support, no matter the size, helps fuel champions every day. For information about how you can support NKU student athletes, log on now to gonorsefund.com. 15.57 to go in this one. Coastal Carolina with a big lead, and the stats certainly bear that out, Brady. Oh, most definitely. Almost every statistical category dominated by Coastal Carolina. It shows they've doubled up the score on Asheville. 24 to 8 points in the paint, 17 to nothing in bench points, and 17 to 5 on fast break points and you know it's really tough start for the season for UNC Asheville and at this point you got to hope that you're not just beat down after a trip if you go home theoretically with three losses and you know they've got one more to play against Manhattan but we saw last night that they're a, a tough out as well so 
you know, it's just building for the future. And at this point, Mike Morell is trying to build this culture to establish his own program. But sometimes, man, there is some rough early goings. And that's right now the case for the Bulldogs. He was hired on April the 11th to take over the program at UNC Asheville. And an outstanding young recruiter. And certainly good days are ahead for UNC Asheville. But right now, David Pierce and Coastal Carolina continue to pile up the score. Yeah, it's proven. I mean, he had two top five recruiting classes at the University of Texas. And, you know, the centerpiece really was Mohamed Bamba, who, you know, top five pick in the NBA. Um, but, yeah, he's going to have to get dudes like that. And it's tough to do that at the mid-major level. But Asheville, North Carolina is a nice place to bring players in. And they've had success. They brought in Macy Oteague a couple years ago who had transferred out. A guy from this area went to Walnut Hills High School over in Cincinnati. But he transferred out after two years. Now he's going to Baylor. So, yeah, I mean, that's, that's the tough part about being on the mid-major level. You can find a star like, say, a Mohamed Bama or a Macy Oteague. But can you get him to stay there more than a couple of years? And that's going to be the trick here for a guy that clearly can go out and, and find talent. Been a tough day for Devon Baker, but he gets to the free throw line here. And he knocks down a pair of free throws for Baker. Hasn't had the success today that he had yesterday, but with 11 points, he's the leading scorer for UNC Asheville. Coastal Carolina's lead continues to grow as that pass goes out of bounds intended for Tommy Burton. The turnover will give Asheville the basketball. But getting back to Coach Mike Morrell, he's kind of from the area. He's from East Tennessee, out just outside of the Tri-City area there, the Kingsport, Johnson City and, and uh, area there. As there's a three-pointer by Jude. He's from Elizabethton. Bristol is the third of the Tri-Cities, as I was trying to figure it out. And that's just in the foothills of the Smoky Mountains. And there, how about that? A drive and a basket for Pearson. He's going to go to the line. But he knows the area. He knows where to find guys. And, you know, it's just going to take probably a little longer than he expected to get things rolling. With Mike Morelli, high school teammate of Jason Witten, recently retired, now a fellow ESPN employee, although I think he's a little higher up on the, on the pay scale at ESPN. I think he is more than a lot <laughs> above the pay scale than we are. He's working on Monday Night Football, big Monday Night Football game this week, in I, fact. I'd uh, love to be earning his pocket change uh, for no his ESPN check. But, you know, I mean, that's another thing. You know, you've got to your advantage. You know, you can have Jason Witten when he's not around, uh, you know, working maybe, you know, for, for a recruit to come in and look at the facilities and look at the place. And they say, oh, yeah, by the way, this is my dude Jason Witten. Want to meet him? Want to exactly. get a selfie with him? You know, that – for kids, that stuff goes a long way. Older guys like us might kind of laugh at that stuff, but it is important to the type of demographic that you're recruiting to. Obviously, Mike Morell going to do big things at UNC Asheville, but right now, very young squad and, and really just being outclassed by Coastal Carolina today as Baker tries to take it up and the rebound pulled down by H.A. Sanders. Yeah, it's clear Coastal Carolina with a veteran crew and, and a, and a long-time uh, coach and Cliff Ellis. They're just on two different planes right now. Pierce, who just had the three-point play with a spin move, gets it off Dibba. Three-pointer on the way. It looked good all the way, but it ends up short. Battle for the rebound down low. It goes out of bounds. And it'll be UNC Asheville ball. You know, you mentioned these two teams being old-time rivals, and it's just a shame when those long rivalries disappear in, in this area for the, maybe fans watching from outside of this area. You think of, you know, teams like UC and Dayton that used to play every year and uh, Dayton and, you, or Dayton and Xavier. Xavier used to play every year. That was a, a just a really great rivalry. And this is another one that has mm. gone by the wayside in this modern age of college athletics where well, schools it was, move it, around. Yeah, right. Conference reaffiliation is how, how this, like many of those, actually happened. You're contractually obligated because of your conference affiliation to play certain rivals. And, you know, if you're not forced to play them, sometimes that goes away. Kansas and Missouri, that's another crime that's out there that those two schools don't play each other. But, you know, it happened because uh, Coastal Carolina moved into the Sun Belt Conference in order to, you know, uh, uh, move up a level in, in college football. And, and really the basketball rivalry has paid for it. Hippolyte with a left hand. Shot just a little bit too strong, and a foul going to be called on a hold, I believe. And they had some classic battles in the Big South Conference, Coastal and Asheville, and now a timeout is I called. I believe we're going to the monitor again. I believe right. we have another hook and Official hold situation. Timeout. So Kayla is going to be on it here. She, look at that. She's waiting got, for him already. She's doing an outstanding up. job. And here we go again. So the truck has been warned. 
And you know, this is we, we talk about how important the crew is, and of course the scores table. A lot of people working hard, but. Uh, this is a, a position now that's very important here at the table, and that's the person who basically works with the truck, works with the officials to get these replays up and running. Absolutely. You know, the floor director was just – used to be just a person that would hand you a read or cue you in and out of break, but so much more is asked out of that person now because of the replay monitor situation. And, yeah, it's, a, it's you know, it's a tough job, but it's also a job that's necessary. And as we talked about this being a student production – I mean, that's great experience for these guys to get on a crew. Say a national television crew comes into a place like a University of Cincinnati or Xavier where that is a more of a larger national network is going to cover those games. They're always looking for crews, and they're going to ask for students with experience, and that's where the Northern Kentucky students and coming out of the EMV program have such a great advantage and a heads up over kids from other schools. And you and I are both products of that program as well and speak very highly of it. A lot of great people here, a lot of great professors, and a lot of great people on this crew as well that do an outstanding job. And again, these are long days for these students when you have three games in a row and you know they're coming here to get this experience. We're going to take a look at the replay ourselves to see where the potential hook and hold may have happened. The officials have already seen it to determine whether it's going to be a flagrant one. And again, if you joined us late or maybe haven't watched a lot of college basketball, the, the call is that under, and this time it looked like it may have been. Well, their arms that was really engaged, quick. But Almost I'm not like sure that that's it, actually the definition of a hook and hold. They're going to discuss it here. I mean, their arms were entangled, but to call that a hook and hold, I would I, I would say that's not. But and it almost again, looked you're like in November, and they're and they're going to err to the side of caution. And it almost looked like it was a hook from the top this time, like the player and may have. And that's the same thing, you know. It's still a hook and hold. It's just there. Was, I don't think there was enough of the hold part of the hook. It's one thing to hook, but it is the the additional move, the hold, where you're not disengaging and forcing a guy. And so what they call that a common foul? Yeah, the common foul is just so going to be a holding not, foul. And that's fair. I mean, you know, they were definitely entangled. And it is something worth pointing out. If they called a foul on number 11 on the floor and then they go to the monitor and see a hook and hold on somebody else, that initial foul call stays. That cannot be overturned by replay. So something to keep in mind as you're watching games this year is they can go on and assess a hook and hold, but if another foul has been called on the play, that foul is going to stay regardless. In this case, just a common foul, so it's good work. Mr. Labor on your officiating yeah, duties, got that one right. That, man. I'm just looking at the same thing everybody else was. Seegers was the one who commits the foul at the end of the day. Burton misses that shot. Boy, there's a lot of traffic, and they call that a traveling violation. Isaac Hippolyte going to be whistled for the infraction. Turnover gives the ball back to UNC Asheville. UNC Asheville, only one of their last ten from the floor. And they trail 58-32. In this third game of six, just about halfway home for the weekend here at Northern Kentucky University. Seems like we just started this yesterday, man. <laughs> it did, does seem like it was just yesterday. Probably because it was. <laughs> well, certainly yesterday for you, I had a chance just to sit on media row yesterday as a steal coming for Pierce. Pierce goes up, lays it up and in. All right, nice layup action there by Pierce. Freshman from St. Petersburg, Florida. Gibbs High School. And Looks like little... the shot clock did not start rolling there so they get down to 29 it did not roll after that made bad that's another one of those things the officials that's have a to sharp be eye of. yeah and that's a sharp eye there they're being watched they're being watched all season that's long right. but they're being watched up close in person in person today yeah so that's the one advantage i think to having a tournament this close to indianapolis where the head of the ncaa is is mm -hmm. very easy to drive down catch a few games and absolutely get a chance you to see four crews as a region foul going to be called against hippolyte but you know it's early season for the officials too these guys are working oh, yeah. their first games too so they're working out the bugs sure not only early year trying to get the reps in, but also having to deal with new rules like the hook and hold we talk about. A lot of the new emphasis is, emphasis emphasis this year. I think I just made up a word there, but they didn't teach me that at Northern Kentucky. But it's, t it's tough for the officials, too, having to try to adjust to everything. Absolutely. Back with the basketball. Hands it off for Seegers. Seegers down the lane, losing control, and 
A foul going to be called. Looked like he might have lost control on his own, but gets bailed out by the call. I was just going to say, I think that's a bailout call for Seegers. But it's about time Asheville gets a break, for goodness sake. Seems like everything has gone against him here this weekend. As they've been nearly doubled up here as we are, what, seven minutes into the second half here? It's pretty much the same story last night against Northern Kentucky. They did score some points late to make that closer, but at one point it was nearly a 40-point game and a legal screen going to be called against Asheville. And that's Peck, and I think that's his fourth. That is definitely Peck's fourth. Peck had a decent game last night, but really struggling here. A transfer out of Drexel. Played at St. Thomas Aquinas. He had four points, five rebounds, two block shots last night. But this one here I don't think he's going to ride home about. Probably not. And, again, early foul trouble really derailed his night. And with him out of the game, back to the 1-3-1 zone goes UNC Asheville. Crawls for the basketball. And a steal. Zone works to perfection this time. Cressworthy goes to the basket and lays it in. Oh, nice little crossover dribble to get out of the way of the defender there. And good defensive play turned into some transition offense. 60 to 34, Coastal Carolina. Just yeah. Gonna stick to this 1-3-1 one, one zone. Well, and if you're gonna use the 1-3-1, one, one, you've gotta create something up top because once they get it down low, there are some holes in the zone and finding the holes is Gums Freighter who knocks it down. Yeah, a little short baseline jumper by the lefty. He come out and hit his first three-pointer and fired up two or three more, didn't make it there. Find some offense inside the arc there. Devon Baker. Really been working hard, but Coastal Carolina, two or three different defenders, but Dibba's been on him right now. It's Travion Brown, and now a double team. It looks like he went over and back. It was very close. Seegers left side for three. He knocks it down. Nice job. Nice recognition by Baker to find the open man. He had two defenders hawking him, and he finds his man open in the corner. A nice little, what, 5-0 run here now. Brown walked the tightrope on the midcourt line, able to get it into the corner. It's 62-37. Crawls will put up the left-hand jumper, and it's in and out. Offensive rebound pulled down by Cuthbertson. Cuthbertson goes up with contact. Can't get it to go. Ball goes off of his foot and out of bounds. And that will take us to the media timeout. 11.07 left. Coastal Carolina 62-37. You're watching the Kimmy Classic on ESPN3. Tournament action continues immediately following this game right here on ESPN3. Northern Kentucky University takes on Manhattan with a tip approximately 7 o'clock. It's the Norse and the Jaspers right here on ESPN3. And that game will take place about 45 minutes after this one is completed. And Brady will slide over to this seat. And the coach, Rich Hoyt, will join us for color commentary. I'm looking at Rich Hoyt right now as we speak. I hope he's listening to us. I guarantee he's not because I see he is over there studying and getting his last-second prep ready for this one. This will be his second game of the day. He yeah, did, uh, he's over at Xavier for a women's basketball game in the Warren Hill Classic. That game will be coming up at approximately 7 o'clock. Right here on ESPN 3. Three-pointer on the way is left short. Cuthbertson, another rebound. That's 11 for Cuthbertson, a double-double for the big fella. And Miss Wanda's got to be proud back home. Well, there's no doubt about it. She'd be proud no matter what, but an uh -oh. assist there from Cuthbertson throwing it down low to Burton, who right. scores. Burton just getting some space underneath the basket. Cuthbertson finding him. Classic high-low double post there. That's five dimes for Cuthbertson to go with a double-double. Stat sheet stuffer here today. 64-37, Coastal Carolina. Back up top for Jude. Ten on the shot clock. Cressworthy will back it up, set it up. Jude with the high screen. Worthy will take it himself for three. It's off the mark. Rebound pulled down by Brown. Runs wide right. Hit nothing but the backboard. Crawlge goes to the baseline. Crawlge goes up and under and scores. How about that? The left-hand scoop up off the banking board. When you make the basket, it's the banking board. When you miss it, it's just the backboard. <laughs> That's where most of my shots hit are the backboard. <laughs> Not today for Coastal Carolina, though. Three for Jude from the left side is good. Wow, Jude finding himself open there. Nice recognition again. That's where classic case. Suck the defense in, kick it back out. Wide open shooter. There's a single game scoring record at Tulsa High School, 54 points. Showing some of that scoring touch today as well. That's where he works it up for UNC Asheville. Seegers loses it. He tries to go up with it. And 
Burton will come up with it for Coastal Carolina. Coach Cliff Ellis says easy. He wants to slow things down, kind of bleed some clocks. So what do they do? They fire up a shot five seconds into the timer. Cuthbertson puts up that shot. But the offensive rebound goes to Coastal Carolina. Crawls will take it. And he can't convert. Rebound pulled down by Tajon Jones. And a foul going to be whistled. As Cuthbertson going to be whistled for the infraction. Just his first personal foul. Each team now with six fouls. So we'll be headed into the bonus for the remaining Number of time here, just under nine minutes left to go, and now some wholesale changes there. Coach Ellis not happy. He gave specific instructions to go easy and slow down the offense. That didn't happen, so four new guys come into the game as a result. And that's what he's going to do, and obviously that's why Cliff Ellis has had so much success everywhere he goes. He's going to, you know, just because you're up by 26 points doesn't mean that you can just do whatever you want. You're working for the rest of the season. You've got to teach something here. Every coach will tell you his best teaching tool is the bench. Worthy with the basketball as saw Jalen Seegers hobble off. The trainer came out to meet him. Hopefully he'll be okay. Yeah, they can't afford to lose him or really anybody. Seven to shoot. Crossover move. Kicks it back out. Whistle and a foul underneath the basket. Going to go against Coastal Carolina. Prima Dibba going to pick up the personal. And that will send Crest Worthy to the line for one in the bonus. Not sure about you, Matt, but did you leave the bag of popcorn in your microwave too long? I'm telling you, somebody might have overcooked one just a little bit. Man, I love that stuff. Not when it's all burnt up. I'm going to say, and they didn't even bring us any. Well, you know how that goes. <laughs> Free throw, no good. They did have pizza in the media room, so they I'm did. a happy camper. I'll be attacking that while you guys <laughs> attack the second game. Uh, Zone defense again from UNC Asheville. In the corner, Gums Freighter, three-pointer is off the mark. Battle for the loose ball, Asheville able to save it in, but it's going to end up in the hands of Coastal Carolina. Down the middle, Bamba has, loses it on the way up. Worthy tries to come out with it, and he is fouled as Gums Freighter nearly coming up with the steal, but getting the foul first. Yeah, Bamba somehow got that ball behind his head when he was driving, and Jones blocking from behind. David Pierce going to check back in. Gums Freighter going to check out. One and one upcoming for Worthy. Coach Ellis stopping him for a teaching moment there. Press Worthy to the line for one in the bonus. Worthy with three, or excuse me, two points on the game, looking for his third, and that one is good. Yeah, Worthy's done a really good job off the bench. Another one of these freshmen, six feet two out of Gastonia, North Carolina. Played at Beckley Prep, averaged 20 points a game there. Six assists a game, five rebounds. Second one good for Worthy. 66-42, Coastal Carolina. And extending the defense here is UNC Asheville, and now they'll back it up. A little bit of token pressure, and then they back it up. Hippolyte will take a three from the right side. It's no good. Offensive rebound. No, it's taken away by Worthy, but he can't control it. It goes out of bounds, and we go to break. Coastal Carolina leading this one 66-42. More coming up next here on ESPN3. Back in Northern Kentucky University, Coastal Carolina with a big lead, taking a look at the update on our Star Watch players. Well, Zach Cupperson, 13 points, 12 rebounds, six assists. You were saying during the break, can he find four more assists? I'm shocked if they keep him out there much longer here with 7.51 left to go. And Baker, 11 points for the uh, Bulldogs. And, you know, he's really had a tough time trying to find his. He's done that on three of 12 from the floor, one of five from long range. And Cody Jude is actually now their leading scorer with 13 points. But, you know, it was obvious that Baker was the focus of the game plan to not let him beat them. And that is exactly what has happened as Coastal Carolina offensively with four guys in double digits. And the key really has been on the glass. 42 to 23, the rebounding advantage. 17 of those rebounds for Coastal Carolina on the offensive board. And Sanders dials up a little string music to boot. And that's another assist for Cuthbertson. It's 69-42. You can tell Cuthbertson looked at him like, you're going to shoot this, right? <laughs> and he did. 
Well, he needs so three more. Somebody's here. aware of that uh, stat count. I tell Air you what, ball. it feels like an NBA game when that happens. <laughs> right. And you got to talk about you know professional courtesies and all that kind of unwritten rule <laughs> stuff. Don't you don't hurt, hurt feelings. Harris works it down low for Bamba. If you're saying you don't hurt feelings, you stop somebody. That's what Double Angel's got to do. Comforts and up and under with a bucket. Hard he had to, stop to change that. direction in midair. He was going to attack from the front. Realized he had to do a little dips do on the right hand side. Cuthbertson has been Mr. Everything today for Coastal Carolina. 71 42 lead. You can see Asheville working the shot clock here. Try to work on execution here. Jude takes the long three. It's no good. And Sanders grabbed the rebound. And foul going to be called against UNC Asheville. Lawson had that ball momentarily and somehow slipped through his hands, and then he commits the foul. That's foul number seven on UNC Asheville in the second half, so that will be one and one bonus for Coastal Carolina. That's one way to stop Cuthbertson from getting assists. Look at that rebound advantage, 44 to 23. Almost doubled up. That is, yeah, it almost doubled up there. That's I was more of an EMB major and an English <laughs> guy than I was math. I really struggle with that, by the way. Yeah, they've dominated on the boards on both ends of the floor. Yeah, I was good at reading numbers, not trying to figure out how they <laughs> happened. 30-point lead for Coastal Carolina. A.J. Sanders, senior from Greenville, North Carolina. Knocks them both down. Now Baker will come back in after getting a quick blow. They use that TV timeout plus about a minute of game time, and he's probably going to stay in there for the remainder. Like you mentioned, their goal was to take him away, and then when UNC Asheville had foul trouble to go along with that, it really compounded problems for the Bulldogs. Baker played 35 minutes and literally was helped to the dressing room at the conclusion of last night's game against Manhattan. He had given it his all, and his team came up just short. In the corner. Baker, five to shoot. Baker with a crossover down the lane. Left hand, oh, it's good oh, shot, and it goes. That's some eye candy right there. A little crossover, and then he cups it with the left hand. Vaughn Baker with a nice move. For Asheville, you want to find some things to feel positive about in the final 549. Obviously, the result well determined. Down low, shot put up, no good. As Bamba going to go to the line, unable to finish. Boy, Bamba couldn't believe he didn't make that shot, but Lawson just grabbed him around the waist, and you know that that's some classic old school NBA basketball. There, you do not let a guy make a shot within five feet of the basket, regardless of what you got to do to stop him. I'm gonna do Bamba. Was the number three recruit coming out of the province of Ontario, as rated by ESPN.com. Yeah, Bamba's been really good so far for these guys. He's a junior. Went to High Point Christian where he was a teammate of Bam Adebayo. In fact, he was his backup, so he didn't get a whole lot of playing time until his senior year. Loose ball foul called. And I think we're going back to the monitor again. Kayla knows the drill now. Good anticipation by that young lady. I don't know who's going to be the floor director for game number two, but they need to be taking lessons, taking notes. No doubt about that. And we'll go back and take a look at it again. And I like how Kayla was smart enough to wear the white and black and gray stripes to coordinate with the officials. That's, I'm sure, an intentional choice this you morning. You had her to official score Rick Myers, and now you've got the fifth official out there. That's right. And That's good stuff. She's been about as busy as anybody I'd so far in this Definitely one. busier than me. <laughs> That's right. I've just sat here this whole time, <laughs> causing a crease in my pants. <laughs> so they're taking a close look here on the rebound to see we have another hook and hold violation. Of course, that'd be a flagrant one. We've gone over that. We'll probably continue to go over that throughout the year. You'll hear your favorite announcers talk about it ad nauseum. We're going to have plenty of times to help explain it, that's for sure, at least in the early going here. So looking down low, looks like if I'm was Cuthbert's, and I heard them say number 40. 40. Yeah, there's his arm underneath. but his And he was the one who was actually hooked. I think it was Peck who might be the guilty party. And that's the hard part when you're looking at a replay situation. If it's Pack, his night is done because that would be his fifth personal foul. So we're, we're going to well, discuss yes. it and talk about Not it. Not only that, but they're congratulating themselves on a job well done. And it's, again, 
It's a flagrant two. So that'd be his fifth one. Actually, they called it on Cuthbertson. I'm they pretty did. Sure. Wow, it looked like it was Peck who did it. Interesting. Now, I heard them say number 40 is who they were looking for, but it looked from here like he was the victim in the crime. I think that's what Cliff Ellis is asking about it. And that's an old pro there. Cliff Ellis knows that that's not a battle that he's going to win, so he's not going to go crazy about it because I think he feels like we do, that this is something that's a point of emphasis today, but will it be tomorrow? Jeremy Peck will go to the line for two. And then UNC Asheville will get the ball after the flagrant one on Zach Cuthbertson. Tell you what, guys like Cliff Ellis have forgot more basketball than you and I or anybody in this room have probably ever learned. So when I see him not getting so upset about it, I know that's for a reason. No, no doubt about it. I mean, these coaches were all told, I know it was a point of emphasis in a lot of the closed scrimmages where the officials made a point to talk it over with these teams, the secret, not so secret scrimmages that always come out. The, that was a place where they started really talking about it. And we're gonna see it in the early part of the college basketball season. And unfortunately, it, a lot of people who don't like replay, and, and sometimes I'm included in that, it's, it really does slow the game the down. The only way you can determine a hook a hold is on the replay monitor. Yeah, I mean, you can see it live as Lawson knocks down the long jumper. But, so. you, but they have to confirm it. For, because of the penalty involved, the flagrant one, they have to go confirm it at the monitor. And, and to go back to your original point, if you don't like the monitor, the genie's out of the bottle. It's not going away. It's not. It's, there's only going to be more that's legislated through that. Absolutely. And you just got to hope that you have officials who don't use it as a crutch where the game might be a little too fast for them. All the way across for Pierce. Four to shoot. Pierce, Dibba, gonna have to shoot a quick. Working it down low for Bamba, and it doesn't hit the rim. That's a 30-second shot clock violation. Yeah, that's where Bamba needed to use the glass there. He had a much better chance of making that shot, and at very least, even if he doesn't make it, you can get that offensive rebound because you've touched the rim, maybe causing yourself to get an extra possession out of the deal. Instead, it's turnover, and Asheville got a chance to put two points on the board. John Jones and hasn't played a ton because of foul trouble early on. Devon Baker trying to use a high screen, draws three defenders to him. Down low, Peck is right under the basket, but he can't handle that pass. And Amadou Bamba comes out with it. Working in for A.J. Sanders, down low on the block as Cuthbertson tries to make a move, but losing control of the basketball, and Jones comes out with it. Yeah, Cuthbertson put down a dribble that he probably didn't realize he didn't have to do. He could have just went with it up and under. Lawson tries the three from the left side. It's no good. Rebound pulled down by Coastal Carolina. This is where Coach Ellis wants him to slow it down. Bleed some clock. Is Eddie Sutton say massage the ball? You want to see execution here against this 1-3-1 zone. Three-pointer from Divas, an air ball. Yeah, he fell away from that. That shot's available the whole time. He didn't need it then. Worthy is blocked, but the foul going to be called. And after this final media timeout of the game, he'll go to the free throw line. 3.43 left in regulation. Coastal Carolina leading 73-48. You're watching the Kimi Classic on ESPN3. Back in Northern Kentucky University, one final break. Coastal Carolina leading 73-48. Leading scorer is Zach Cuthbertson. Uh, 15 points, 13 rebounds, 7 assists. And he's going to get a seat on the bench. His night's over. Miss Wanda, your son did a great job here tonight. And if you want to watch us tomorrow, hopefully you can see us on Fox Sports Ohio. But if not, we'll still be on ESPN3. If you're outside our region, so you'll be able to dial us up. But we were talking about in the break, Matt, you know, Coastal Carolina with four different guys in double figures. You've got two guys with at least five assists, your point guard, Dibba, your post player, Cuthbertson. And then upon further review, A.J. Sanders underratedly if that's a word, eight points, nine rebounds. If I can He's make up words, you can do that too. Yeah, I mean, it's they've spread it around, and, and attacking this zone, it's so important to have those assists because that means they're breaking the zone down with passing and not trying to shoot over the top of it. And you got Baker on the other side for Asheville, 13 points, and he's earned every single one of them. And Cody Jude also with 13 himself, the only two players in double figures for the Bulldogs. And Asheville's not quitting. They're going to throw on that press. And Josh Coleman, a new player in the game, gets attacked there. Nice defense there by Lawson. Stolen away, though. Devon Baker comes out with it. 
Von Baker going to see Abrima Dibba in his sleep probably tonight. <laughs> He's been all over him. Surprised he didn't follow him to the bench and sit down next to him. His traveling violation is called. Yeah, also Malik Lagania is in the game now, now, number five for Coastal Carolina as Cliff Ellis is going to empty out his bench. And Abrima Dibba is going to have his night end here with 319 left to go. Another good job by him. 7.6 rebounds and five assists. That's a, a pretty solid night by anybody's standards. Yeah, it's pretty much the scout team out there for Coastal Carolina. And Asheville keeping their starters out there, so. Well, it's a good chance for them to get better and keep working on three things. The three by Trevion Brown is good. Brown, a little step back action there. Dialing up the string music, playing a little nylon song here in the BBNT arena. Got to empty out the tool bag here, Matt. <laughs> Got to use them all. Got to. Run out of time. You can't take them home with you. That's right. But luckily today we can transfer them over to the next game. That's, that's right. where we start over. I mean, we started with the stuff arena early, Man, and I really felt like that set good. the tone. That was a good hey, one. It was. I probably should have gave Culbertson that second one. But, you know, we got to wait for tonight's game. And NKU, they got a lot of high flyers on that NKU team. Adrian Nelson had the only stuff arena of the game last night. But, you know, you guys like Faulkner and Jalen Tate who play above the rim. And how good was Jalen Tate oh, last night? So good. I mean, just controlled the whole game as a – Traveling violation going to be called here. I mean, everybody talks about Drew McDonald, and for good reason. He's the preseason Horizon League Player of the Year. But Jalen Tate controlled both ends of the floor. He was so outstanding defensively and really able to penetrate, bring defenders to him, and find open guys. That's right. As Duncan Heath checks in for Asheville. You're right. Jalen Tate, you know, he he's just – his game keeps improving year by year and by larger and larger steps. Just think if he would have been able to play that freshman year more than eight games. No he broke his hand at Illinois, sat out the rest of the year as Peck gets the bucket. A tough game for Peck. He spent a lot of time in foul trouble, but nice shot that time by Peck. 76-51 is under two minutes ago. And Game number three of six this weekend. Three-pointer on the way is no good. Offensive rebound pulled down by Hippolyte, but he's stripped as he goes up. And Asheville comes out with a basketball. Lawson does a good job of getting on the ground for the loose ball. Those 50-50 balls, when you can go down there and get that, that'll win points with your coach every time. You see Mike Morrell coaching just as hard in the 39th minute as he coached in the first one. And Trying to set that tempo with his team, too, to keep playing hard to the very end. That guy's got to go to the gym to sustain enough shape to coach the way he does. It's a ball of energy out there. I expect to see him running around the parking lot for some warm-up cardio. <laughs> I heard that was done before any of us got here, Matt, but we'll keep that undercover. That's almost like a secret scrimmage kind of thing. <laughs> it's right. something you know, but if you tell anybody, you'll be penalized. Yeah, he's going to do a good job of this UNC Asheville program. They're going to get the kids in there, and, and this group's going to continue to get better as long as they – can really start seeing some positive results of their, their hard work. And the first two games of this tournament, obviously, they're not going to see that. But they've got another chance tomorrow, another chance to come out against a, a very tough Manhattan team to, to try to salvage something out of the whole weekend. Yeah, well, it would be an inter interesting matchup there. That's two teams, very young. And Manhattan's got a little bit more experience, though. And we still have not seen Pauly Polycap yet, the best player for Manhattan. And we'll see if we even see him at all this weekend. But he'll be the difference maker for the Jaspers, that's for sure, as the season rolls along. Shot inside is no good. Magania misses that opportunity and rebound pulled down by Cress Worthy. We're down to a minute here. Game number one on this Saturday. Time for Worthy. And again, if you're a UNC Asheville fan, we'll have that game tomorrow against Manhattan. It'll be Brady and I again on the call. 3.30 Eastern time on ESPN3. Join us tomorrow for that one. And again, Brady and Rich will have the call coming up in about 45 minutes time as the jumper from the baseline is good. That's Gums Freighter again. He's done a nice job off the bench today. He has. He has. He kind of fell in love with that three-point shot early on. But when he realizes that he's allowed to shoot from inside the arc, he can do great things as well. Worthy comes off the screen, and he's going to be fouled. As Trevion Brown gets him on the way by. So it's about 6.30 Eastern time, so 
Probably looking at about a 7.15 to 7.25 tip off for team tell number to get two. get ready at 7 p.m., get all lathered get your up popcorn. And, and wait for the anticipation. And if you're here in the greater Cincinnati area and you have not gotten your tickets yet, what is wrong with you? Get on down here. Yeah, it was we a good a great crowd, crowd last, night. last night, and the lower bowl was mostly full. There's still plenty of seats in the upper level, and I'm telling you what, there's not a bad seat in this place. There's not. It's a, I've been to the very top, and I've been down the floor, and it really is, and it's a great building. Of course, for those who are not familiar, uh, Northern Kentucky played host to University of Cincinnati a year ago while their arena was being renovated here. But just the Norse here this year, and for today, Coastal Carolina and UNC Asheville, and it's the designated visitors. They're going to go to walk out with a victory today as the coaches will shake hands. And game number two for these two teams of the weekend goes to Coastal Carolina. They win this one by a final score of 78-52. to 52. Last thoughts, Brady? Uh, it's a good win for Coastal Carolina. This is a great preparation as they'll have a very tough match tomorrow against Northern Kentucky. And Asheville, they can't let this loss turn into a next one tomorrow. For my partner, Brady Labor, our producer, Sarah Sudoff, engineer Bill Farrow, and our director, Cameron Varner. I'm Matt Sexton saying goodbye from the bb &T Arena where the final score is Coastal Carolina 78, UNC Asheville 52. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN. Join us for NKU in Manhattan at 7 o'clock on ESPN3.